All right, greetings, math people. So today we have another interesting integral. So if you like interesting integrals, uh, you're in the right place. This one is a lot worse than it looks, to be perfectly honest. Specialized in science and math and original black men Busting thoughts that pierce your mental the fierce Ripping your saxon Vocal toe to toe impeccable split in your back son Simple as addition and subtraction Black thought the infinite relax one So here it is uh, kind of like a lion Very beautiful but yet very deadly So as you look at a problem like this You're thinking about all, all your arsenal Going through your catalog of integration techniques You may be thinking about U sub Integration by parts improper fractions and you should kind of see that none of that stuff really applies here and so then you might be thinking uh, completing the square trig substitution and uh, that is the route to go so let's go ahead and apply completing the square here and see where that leads us so i'm going to complete the square on this puppy and so i'm going to integrate dx and x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus 9 plus 2. Okay, cool. Everything is looking beautiful. Uh, let's factor the first three terms out. And this is the integral of dx over x minus 3 squared minus 7. All right. So when I mention that this is a lot worse than it looks, that's really all because of this guy right here and that guy alone. If that was a plus sign, I would be done with the problem right now. I would be able to write my answer in a matter of seconds and be done with the problem. But the fact that that's a minus sign makes it a lot more complicated. You have to respect that minus sign in, in many uh, facets of mathematics. So let me just explain, because so, some people may get this confused. What would happen if this was a plus sign? So I'll go back to the minus sign in a moment, but let's say it was a plus sign. If it was a plus sign, uh, that's in the form of arc 10 and my answer would be one over the square root of seven arc 10 of x minus three over the square root of seven plus c done it would be that easy if that was a if that was a plus sign i'd be done i'd be on to the next problem drinking some water uh and listening to some music and i'm so exhausted just did a hundred problems and i almost lost it but never try to doubt on me Cause like a TI-84 You can count on me Get it? Keep on rocking Keep on dancing But the fact that this guy is a minus sign uh, Complicates matters uh, Quite interesting And it makes the problem a lot more involved it Still can be solved But not as quickly as this So let me rewrite it with the minus sign And let's formulate our attack so then the problem is, so we're integrating dx over x minus 3 squared minus 7. All right. So I'm going to utilize a couple of tricks that you, you may not be familiar with. But, you know, as you see more problems, more different type of problems, you become more familiar. So you'll be familiar about with this stuff after today. Um, I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm going to do a little substitution here, and I, I'll kind of give you some insight to what I'm trying to accomplish. So I'm going to write a Pythagorean uh, identity, a Pythagorean trigonometric identity here, which is 1 plus 10 squared theta is secant squared theta. And I want to solve this for 10 squared theta. So 10 squared theta would be secant squared theta minus 1. All right, so why did I invoke that guy? Second squared theta is some function minus one. So I got something being squared minus something else. Not really one, but um, I can find a way to make that a one. So let's say we make x minus three, the square root of seven, tan theta. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Square root of seven, secant theta. Now, why am I trying to do that? Because I want to get this secant squared theta minus one action. So why did I put the square root of seven there? Because this x minus three is being squared. And so when I square this, I'm going to get seven secant squared. And that seven 
can be factored out with this seven and I'm gonna get secant squared minus one. So this actually is a substitution I'm doing. So this is a substitution, kind of like U sub, but it's, it's a theta sub, if you will. So I need to go through the normal process of doing substitution. I need to figure out uh, what dx is in terms of theta and all that. So let me go ahead and do that as well. Uh, my, my dx is going to be pretty funky, but it's all going to work out quite nicely. So let me take the derivative of both sides, and I'll get uh, dx equals the square root of 7 secant theta tan theta d theta. OK, again. It's pretty funky, but it's still going to work out. All right, so let's 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 do the substitution. Let's, so let's get a look at everything. So our dx is going to turn into square root of seven secant theta tan theta d theta, no problem. And our denominator, our x minus three squared minus seven, is going to turn into the square root of seven secant theta squared minus seven. So it's going to look something like this. All right, so again, my dx is this stuff. So square root of 7 secant theta tan theta d theta. And my denominator, x minus 3 squared, well, what's x minus 3? It's the square root of 7 secant theta. So the square root of 7 secant theta squared and then, of course, uh, minus 7, minus 7. All right. So believe it or not, uh, this is better than, than this. So we're, we're in better shape right now. So let, let me square this denominator and, and see what happens. So let me rewrite my numerator. So uh, this is the integral of the square root of seven secant theta tan theta d theta over. So now I'm gonna square this. Sorry, let me put on camera. I'm gonna square this. It's gonna be seven secant squared theta minus seven. So over seven secant squared theta minus seven. All right, so what I'm gonna do down here is factor out a seven, and I'm gonna pull it out of the integral, and I'm gonna pull the square root of seven out of the integral as well. So I'm gonna have the square root of seven over seven, integral, secant, theta, tan, theta, d, theta, over. Now, again, I'm factoring a seven out from here, so that's gonna be secant, squared theta minus one. Okay, secant squared theta minus one is tan theta. Square root of seven over seven integral secant theta tan theta d theta over tan squared theta. Things are looking better. So things are looking even better now. Now, what you notice is this tan theta will cancel out one of these tan thetas. So we have secant theta over tan theta. Uh, we'll simplify that. So square, well, let me just write how it simplifies and I'll put inside the integral. So let's put this in terms of sine and cosine. So secant is one over cosine and tangent is sine over cosine, but we're dividing by tangent. So that'll be multiplying by cosine over sine. So the cosines would cancel, and this would be 1 over sine theta, which is cosecant theta. So all of this is going to turn into cosecant theta. I think I may have just said cosine theta. Of course, I meant to say cosecant theta. So all this junk is simply cosecant theta. So our problem is the square root of 7 over 7 times the integral of cosecant theta d theta. So now you're probably getting excited. We can condense it down to a simple trigonometric function. And so now you probably think the answer is quite obvious, uh, but it's not. So uh, this, if this was just a problem, 
this in itself is a fairly interesting integral. So even this in itself is going to acquire a, a little bit of maneuvering that you may not be used to. So it's not over yet. So let's let's take a look at at this. So I'm I'm going to do some some little tricks of the trade here. So I'm going to assign u. So I did a, a substitution with with theta, and now I'm going to do kind of a substitution with u. So let's say u is cosecant theta plus cotangent theta. So that's me arbitrarily uh, choosing a value for you that I believe is going to be of benefit to me. And then, so uh, let's say, let's take the derivative of both sides. So du, well, du would be the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent and the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So du would be this guy, d theta. So du is negative cosecant theta, cotangent theta, minus cosecant theta squared. Now let's factor out a cosecant theta. So du, we're going to take out a cosecant theta, negative cosecant theta times, so what's going to be left? You're going to have a cotangent theta left and a cosecant theta left, d theta. Well, what, what is this? That's you, my guy. Cotangent theta plus cosecant theta. That's you, my guy. So this is, so du is negative u cosecant theta, d theta. Uh, let me move the u over here. Do I want to, I'm going to move the, the minus sign with it as well. So negative du over u equals cosecant theta, d theta. Okay, isn't this the integral I'm trying to find right here? Let me go back, right? This, this is the little integral that I need, correct? So can I not integrate both sides the way this looks now, right? So that means that the integral of cosecant theta, what I've been trying to find, and I know there's a there's a square root of seven over seven in front of it. I'll, I'll put that in momentarily, but it's just the integral of du over u. Isn't the integral? Excuse me. It's the integral of negative du over u, which is. Well, let, so let me write that and let me write the square root of seven over seven in front of it. So the square root of seven over seven times the integral of cosecant theta, d theta is going to be. Now there's a negative sign right here. So I'm going to put negative square root of seven over seven. Now, again, the integral of du over u is ln u. ln, what is u? Here's u, my guy. So ln cosecant theta plus cotangent theta plus c. All right, we did it, right? Almost. So this is a good answer, but this answer is in terms of theta. And we need our answer in terms of x. It's like when you do a u sub and you have the answer in terms of u, you need to rewrite the answer uh, back in terms of x. And yes, I did do a u sub, but I was a u sub in terms of theta. And I did rewrite it from u in terms of theta, but the original problem was in terms of x. So now I have to figure out what cosecant theta is and cotangent theta is in terms of x. So let's go back to when I did the substitution. So I have a lot of papers here. Well, actually, I actually only have three. Three, that's pretty good. I've only used three sheets of paper on this guy. I was anticipating more. Where'd I do the substitutions? Not on page one. Here it is on page two. So remember, this is the substitution I did with x in terms of theta. So, so let me write this, that x minus three is the square root of seven times secant theta. And then let's, let's uh, play with that a little bit. So the substitution we did was that x minus three is the square root of seven times 
secant theta. Okay, cool, cool. So let's let's solve for secant theta, shall we? So secant theta is x minus three over the square root of seven, right? And secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Let's draw a triangle. And why am I drawing a triangle? Because I need to figure out what cotangent theta and cosecant theta are in terms of x. So in terms of this problem, secant theta, again, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. Secant theta is x minus 3 over the square root of 7. So the hypotenuse is x minus 3, adjacent is the square root of 7. Now, in order to find cosecant, which is hypotenuse over opposite, and cotangent, which is adjacent over opposite, I need to know opposite. So I'm going to have to do Pythagorean theorem uh, to get this opposite side here. So it's going to be the square of my, it's going to be the square root of the square of my denominator minus, excuse, excuse me, not denominator. It's going to be the square root of the square of my hypotenuse uh, minus the leg. So uh, let's, let's say this, this side is, uh, say we call it H, for instance. So H is going to be uh, the square root of the square of my hypotenuse, which is X squared minus 6X plus 9, minus the square of my leg, which would be 7. So H would be the square root of X squared minus 6X plus 2. Uh, that should look familiar to the original problem. But anyway, this is, this is the opposite side. So now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, drum roll, please. Uh, we're now ready to write our final uh, complete answer. So let me write what the original problem was. Is this it? This is the first page, right? So this was the original problem here. So I'm now ready to write my answer. So the integral of dx over x squared minus 6x plus 2 is, and now let me go to this paper, a lot of papers to keep up with. So is, and now I'm going to write the negative square root of 7 over 7, negative square root of 7 over 7, ln. And the first ln is cosecant theta. What did I just write? Cosecant theta. Where did I just write cosecant theta? Oh, I don't think I ever did write cosecant theta. Okay. So I never wrote cosecant theta. So let me write cosecant theta on this paper. So let, let's say, well, let me do it on a blank sheet of paper, but referring to this triangle. So cosecant theta, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. The hypotenuse is x minus 3. The hypotenuse is the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 2. And let me, I uh, missed a C for cosecant. And let me also write a cotangent theta. Cotangent theta. Cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Uh, the adjacent side is the square root of 7, so it's the square root of 7 over the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 2. So notice they both have opposites for their denom excuse me, they both have opposite for their denominator, so they have common denominators. All right, so let me get back to writing my final answer. Okay, so uh, there's a couple papers I'm going to refer to. So negative square root of 7 over 7, ln, and after that should be cosecant theta. And in terms of x, cosecant theta is x minus 3 over the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 2. So this is x minus 3 over the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 2. Sorry, that was a little off screen. And then it's going to be plus cotangent theta. Well, what's cotangent theta? Cotangent theta is the square root of 7 over the same denominator. So since they have common denominators, they can become one fraction. So I can just put plus 
the square root of seven there, close my absolute value, put my plus C, and now we're done, right? Yes, we're done. So if you like interesting integrals, then you probably love this problem. It's, it's a very nice problem. The tricks used in here, you may want to remember them. You may need to use them on another type of problem. And we will see you next time. Keep on rocking. Keep on dancing. Keep on knocking to the beat. Keep on rocking. Keep on dancing. Keep on knocking to the beat. The beat. If you love math, stand up. If you love cash, band up. If you love class, hand up.